So logically, the first place to start is with this function right here. Let's figure out what it's calling and why it has to return one. We can also see this argument here, which is gonna give us a little bit of a hint as to what's going on. The argument is a string se debug privilege. This is a privilege which a process requests if it wants god mode access to other processes. Groovy. It's basically a super powerful privilege. And when you have access to that privilege in your process, you can pretty much do anything you want on the computer. You can attach to the processes, kill them, read write memory, etc. It's the god mode. So I think I know what this function is doing, but let's click in and we'll take a closer look. Okay, so once we clicked in here, we can see this argument here. Let's just rename this so we know exactly what's going on. I'm just gonna press N here. So this is gonna be an LP name. And we can see right away, Ida is doing all the heavy lifting for us. We can already see that they have applied the structures automatically to these variables. Why have they done that? They know the arguments to these standard Windows functions, so they know that they can apply the structures directly. So let's walk through this code here and we'll figure out exactly what it's doing. So the first thing to do is they call get current process. So this gets a handle, let's rename this, handle to the current process. Then they call open process token and they pass the process handle in there. Then they have an argument 28 and they're passing token handle by reference here. So why don't we open up the documentation for open process token and see exactly what this does. Okay, so pretty self-explanatory. The open process token function opens the access token associated with the process. What the heck is an access token you might ask? Well, we're gonna get into that in just a minute. So they open the access token for the process and the three arguments are the process handle, which we already knew from our reversing. The second argument here is the desired access. So there's going to be an access mask that they pass in. We're gonna to have to figure out what that constant is and apply the enum. And then they pass out a handle to the token. All right, so now that we know what the arguments are, let's go back and we'll apply the correct access mask for that second argument here. Actually, before we jump back, let's just pull up the access rights for access token objects so we have an idea of what kind of a news we can apply. It looks like all of the access rights start with token adjust, token assign, adjust, duplicate, execute, etc. So we'll pop back to Ida and we'll see if we can't find one of those in our standard enums. So we click on the constant here, press M for our enums. We'll click new, start typing in the token, underscore hmm that doesn't look right to me maybe this is a bunch of properties combined together into a single constant I've opened visual studio here there's actually two ways to look up the constants uh, you could either google for it which will probably be pretty quick but i want to show you one other way that you can do this if you have visual studio installed i highly recommend you have visual studio installed it's going to help you out with all kinds of reverse engineering tricks okay so what we want to do is want to figure out the values for each one of those constants to see how they combine to make 0x28 so what we can do is just write the code ourselves and then take a look at the uh, constant values inside of windows.h you could also just find windows.h on your local system that's where this is defined and uh, take a look at it but i'll just show you this way uh, it's a little bit more intuitive so if you include uh, windows.h and then you just assign one of the constants to say an integer so if you're just say int c equals and i can't remember what they're called yeah token adjust default so just grab there we go okay so you'll see that because we've included windows.h token.adjust has already been populated here it's been linked back to the header and when you hover over you can see the value is 128 but i'm going to show you a quick trick here all you have to do is just right click peak definition and here we have all of the definitions for the tokens in windows.h so we were looking for 28 i think yes 0x 28 so let's look for two first so that's token adjust privileges and eight is token query so it's going to be a combination of token adjust privileges and token query so why don't we copy this out and we'll make our own enum in ida so we can apply it so let's pop back here we'll go view open sub views local types right click add type so let's make our enum here it's gonna be token privs, and we'll do token adjust privileges, or there, let me make this bigger so you guys can see a bit better, or token query. 
equals 0x28. Now I think in the standard syntax for enums, you're not allowed to use these special characters, so I'm just gonna do underscore underscore. I mean, it's not as good as having the or, but it's good enough for what we need here. So if we click OK, pop back to our pseudocode view here, press M on our constant, apply the token privs, and there we go. So that's just a quick tip. If you have one of these combined constants where there's a, a bunch of different fields in a mask being set at the same time, you can't actually look up the individual fields. IDA doesn't have definitions for most of them. Some of the access masks, they do actually have defined all the different variations, but for the token privileges, they don't, I guess. So we just make our own, and then that makes this a little bit easier to read. So we're grabbing the access token for the current process, and we're grabbing it with adjust privileges and token query privileges, and this is a handle to the access token. So once we do that, we call lookup privilege value w, and we pass in that argument, which again, if we go back, remember that was se debug privilege. So we pass in se debug privilege into lookup privilege value. It seems pretty self-explanatory what they're doing, but let's pull up the documentation for it just in case. All right, here we go. So the lookup privilege value function retrieves the locally unique identifier, LUID, or L-U-I-D, used on a specific system to locally represent a specified privilege name. So your process has specific privileges, which are granted by the token, and the privileges have names like SE debug privilege, but inside the system, inside of Windows, they also have a unique identifier. So you need to actually get the unique identifier before you can do anything with them. So all we're doing now is asking it, what's the unique identifier for SE debug privileges? So let's pop back to Ida here and we'll continue on. So inside of this and LUID is going to be the LUID for SE debug privileges. So I'm just gonna make quick note here, all right? Because that's actually what we're looking up via the argument here. Of course, you could look up any privilege by name using the same function, but I'm just making a note for myself here so I remember what's going on. So once we get that LUID, we begin to build a structure called new state, and the structure is of type token privileges. I think you, you, you can see where this is going here, right? So our privilege count is one, there's one privilege. The LUID for it is the SE debug privs that we just looked up and attributes are two. We're gonna have to look up what that means. And then we are sending this new state to adjust token privileges. And we are sending in the new state here, the token handle. So that's the access token for our current process. And then we have this return length structure and we have a couple other arguments here that we're gonna have to look up. So let's take a look at adjust token privileges and see what this is doing. All right, so it says that this function enables or disables privileges in a specified access token. I mean, again, it's pretty self-explanatory. Really what we want is a list of arguments here to figure out what's going on. So token handle, pretty self-explanatory. Disable all privileges is a Boolean. So that's set to false. So we're not gonna disable all privileges. The third argument is that new token privileges structure that we built with the SE debug privs. So let's go back and take a look. So that's going to be our new state. And new state is a pointer to a token privileges structure specifying an array of privileges and their attributes. If disable all privileges parameter is false, which it is in our case, the adjust token privileges function enables or disables or removes privileges for the token. There we go, it's pretty self-explanatory. We're just enabling and disabling privileges for the token. And in our case, it looks like we're enabling or disabling uh, SE debug privs. My guess is we're probably enabling them. <laughs> so let's take a look here. It says that the following table describes the action taken by the adjust token privileges function based on the privilege attribute. Remember in our case, the privilege attribute was two. So we have a bunch of different constants here, se privilege enabled, se privilege removed, none. Let's take a look here. We'll see if we can apply an enum for se privilege to that two. Let's come back here. We'll click on our constant two, press M for our enums and look up se underscore priv, and it looks like it is SE privilege enabled. All right, so now that makes perfect sense, we're trying to enable debug privileges 
in the access token for our process, thus giving our process SE debug privileges, which is kind of like God mode on the system. So it looks like that's what's happening here. Um, let's just go through the rest of the arguments just to be sure. So the fourth argument is the buffer length specifies the size and bytes of the buffer pointed to by previous state parameter. This parameter can be zero if the previous state parameter is null. And the next argument is the previous state. So it looks like we do have a buffer size here of 0x10, which is actually 16 hex if I press H. And we are passing in null. So it looks like they probably didn't actually need to set that buffer length. I think this might have been a bit of an error on the developer's part. Probably could have been null according to the documentation. And the final argument here is the return length. And it looks like that is a D word here. And let's see what the return length is. A pointer to a variable that receives the required size and bytes of the buffer pointed to by the previous state parameter. Again, in our case, the previous state parameter is null. So this parameter can be null if previous state is null. So I'm guessing that in this case, the developer is kind of doing a little bit of copy paste and not paying attention to what they're doing because they have a null previous state parameter. So nothing can be passed back via that. However, they do give it a buffer length and they do give it a return length variable where they can store the, uh, the length of this argument, which is null. So I'm not really sure what's happening here. I assume they probably just copy paste this code or maybe they just misread the documentation. Either way, these should all just be null if you wanted to abide by the documentation. But again, I don't think it's gonna hurt that they're not null. The only thing that matters is we're not actually grabbing the previous state here. Okay, so the response from that is what's returned from this function. So let's go back and see what the return from adjust privileges is. So the return value, if the function succeeds, the return value is non-zero. So it looks like they're going to be returning uh, error success, which is one. So as long as this function successfully adjusts the token, then that while loop in the main here will continue running. So let's rename this function here. I'm going to name it MW for malware adjust token. All right, so it looks like we are trying to adjust our token to give ourselves SE debug privileges. And if that succeeds, then we continue on with the next two functions here.